present school is now in session. Home school podcast. Home school. The home school podcast. Why? Because it was home school. I don't want to do that. <laughs> okay. I don't want to do that at all. Welcome back to Homeschool Podcast. I'm Augustino Zoida, and I'm the host of the Homeschool Podcast. Thank you, thank you, thank you so much for tuning in. I know you got a lot of options out there for podcasts, so we really, truly appreciate you stopping by and giving us another shot or a shot for the first time. It means a lot, you guys. Uh, my co-host, my usual, the co-host of uh, Homeschooled Podcast is not in studio right now. This is a solo podcast. I have no guest. I have no co-host. This is something that I do um, sort of rarely, although it's becoming more of like a once a month thing. So if you're new to the uh, to listening to the homeschool podcast, you'll uh, you won't know that. Every now and then I do a solo episode if I got some things on my mind that I want to talk to you guys about. And guess what? Today I do. I um, normally. <clears throat> have a guest on and and uh, we talk about all sorts of things and uh, but today I got I got some things on my mind that I want to get off my chest and I just want to talk about this is also not going to be a very long episode um, normally they're like anywhere between 45 minutes to an hour and uh, something so I don't I don't think that this one will go that long I just got uh, two things that I want to talk about today um, but before we get started you guys just a quick reminder that uh, here at the Homeschool Podcast, we do our very best to provide the best content that we possibly can. We're growing. We're a work in progress. We're trying to get better and get, and grow higher and higher every single day. So um, we really appreciate all the support. And today, you can support our podcast by going to the, our website, homeschooledpod.com, and click on Merch. This is the very best way to support the podcast, which is the most supportive for us, and the the it, it costs you the least. So, um, <clears throat> picking up like a T-shirt or a sticker, or <clears throat> I mean, I got um, tote bags. We have a gym bag. Gyms are opening up, you guys. So um, you're gonna need yourself a, a gym bag. So I have a brand new homeschool podcast gym bag available on there, and um, I mean I got everything. We got yoga pants for the ladies. I've got tank tops for guys and girls to work out in. We got regular t-shirts, long sleeve, short sleeve. I got um, V-neck t-shirts for the ladies or or crew if you want just a regular tee. Hoodies. I mean, guys, it's all on there. It's uh, it's summer. It, it's getting hot. I have beach towels, t- tank tops. I mean, you name it, okay? So um, that's the best way to support because uh, not only does it does it cost us very little to make these T-shirts and it costs you very little to get a T-shirt, but um, mostly we're getting free publicity by you walking around wearing our logo. Speaking of which, our homeschooled podcast design right now is called X-Presidents, the X-President series. It's limited edition. It'll be taken down within like the next four episodes, guys, because when we hit episode 300, you're no longer going to be able to buy the homeschooled X-President series T-shirt. It'll be taken down and a new T-shirt will be taken up. So get it while you still can. It's dope, and that's the best way to support. Even if you can just get a sticker or something, which is like $5, okay? Whatever, anything helps. Also, this episode is brought to you by Personal Chef To Go. I've been talking about Personal Chef To Go on here for almost about a year now because there are so many delivery services that offer fresh food to your door, whether it be trying to help you to learn how to cook um, or, or, or or for people that don't have time to cook and just need the meals already. So that's what this is. Personal Chef To Go is like having your very own personal chef who makes meals especially for you. It gets delivered fresh to your door and the, the meals that you choose are already prepackaged so you don't have to worry about portion control. You don't worry about have to worry about uh, cooking, eating, healthy and grocery shopping so personal chef to go i highly recommend and you can control how often you get the boxes based on your budget so it's it's a personal chef on your budget let me read you this week's menu this week which gets ships out which ships out thursday the the um the 18th you guys this is what they got on the menu blackened uh chickpea lump crab cakes they got roasted vegetarian stuffed pepper uh, they got options if you're if you're pescatarian, vegetarian, vegan, or a carnivore. They got uh, Cuban mojo chicken, uh, Cajun 
jambalaya. Are you kidding me? Tuscan pork loin, chicken uh, cordon bleu, roasted barbecue shrimp. I mean, I mean, guys, th this is the menu, and it keeps going. We're in week eight right now, so they got teriyaki salmon with ginger soy dressing, Greek shrimp with fresh dill dressing, uh, lemon chicken with citrus oregano dressing, and Mongolian pork. Uh, whole grain pasta with turkey meatballs. You guys, this menu is crazy, and every week there's a different menu. You choose. So you're having variety. You're you're eating healthy. You're eating delicious. You're eating you're eating different meals, and it's perfect for the person who's constantly on the go, who doesn't have time to cook healthy, delicious, and worry about portion control. Let someone else do it for you, and you're helping out the homeschooled podcast at the same time. The best way to do it is to click in the description of this video. Click that link for Personal Chef to Go. It'll be the first link that you see in the description. And uh, go ahead and check it out, you guys. Even if you just want to try one week, you can just try one week and see how you like it. We really would appreciate it, and you will too. Um, <clears throat> Also, another way to, uh, to do it is to go to homeschooledpod.com while you're on the website. Click on Sponsors, and you'll see Personal Chef to Go, as well as our other many, many sponsors to see if there's anything on there that you want to maybe try so you can support and help yourself out at the same time. While you're on the website, homeschooledpod.com, don't for forget to click on Tour to see upcoming tour dates if I might be coming to a city near you as America slowly opens up more and more. And maybe even Canada coming soon. But right now, I will be at uh, the House of Comedy, Phoenix, Arizona, a.k.a. slash uh, Scottsdale, a, a house, Brick Bronson's House of Comedy, June 18th through 21st. It's Father's Day weekend. It's Thursday through Sunday. I'll be there. It's going to be off the hook. Can't wait to see you guys there. All right. Thank you for listening to me uh, get all that out of the way. But, hey, listen, we gotta we got to do what we got to do so we can, keep, uh, we can keep the podcast going. So... A couple things that I wanted to talk to you guys about. Number one, which is something we briefly touched on towards the end of the last episode with Renee Garcia, if you listen to that. Um, but we started to get into comedy making a comeback. Now, this podcast, you keep hearing me say it, but I want to remind people, especially as we're growing and, and some people listen for their first time, um, this podcast, uh, I, I, I don't want to throw anybody off homeschooled. What's that mean? Um, it means a lot of things. Number one, I was homeschooled, and it's something specifically unique about me. Um, it's also called that because I've had to teach myself to do a lot of things when life doesn't just hand it to you. Um, you know, when I was homeschooled to a certain point, my mom was helping me with it. But when you got older, you did a lot of it yourself. You had to teach yourself a lot of things. And that really re kind of represents like a society that we live in right now. A lot of things you don't know, you go YouTube it. Or, you know, um, some people, they can't afford to go to college. Or some people, they, they can't afford or have the time to go take classes because, you know, they're running a family and they got a full-time job and kids. So, like, a lot of time you, you, you can't go take these courses or expensive courses um, or, or, or take, like, uh, classes at your local community college if something that you're interested in. So what you have to do is uh, nowadays that's that, that's what people are doing. They're just teaching themselves. You know, you watch some videos, you buy an online course, and you just practice at home. You teach yourself. Um, I've had to do that for several things, and um, that's why I'm proud to call my podcast Homeschooled because um, th it, this is about the journey of an artist. And I'm a stand-up comedian, and whatever – Art, type of artist you might be or something that you're passionate about, I always want everyone to be relating on this podcast to what we're talking about because I know that there it, it's a journey. I know it's a journey, um, but, which is why my one of my slogans on here is document the journey. That's what this podcast is about. It's about documenting the journey. You know, I've had to um, teach myself many things, including doing stand-up. I took a I took very little comedy courses, very, very, very little. Um, I really only took basic ones, and which, 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 which they can be helpful, but nobody can really teach you how to be funny. You learn it yourself. I taught myself. I watched tons of specials. I was constantly in the comedy club, whether you're going up or not, 
or doing an open mic. You, I mean, you're constantly doing open mics and practicing. You're practicing at home. You're writing all the time. But most importantly, you're just watching other people do it. You have to teach yourself these things. Um, I always wanted to be a stand-up comic. I never wanted to be a podcaster, but th- our world turned into that. If you didn't have a podcast as a stand-up comedian, you might as well not be a fucking comedian. And that's kind of what we're dealing with. So I had to start a podcast. I don't know. I didn't know how. I didn't know, I didn't know how to do any of this stuff. And so I had to teach myself how to do all this. It's a long process. I have my co-host helping me, who's really good with video editing. He's an artist who mainly um, wants to be focusing on filmmaking, and that's what he does. So he's really good at the editing. He also taught himself a lot of that stuff, and uh, so he helps me out a lot. But for the most part, it's like, how do you even get your podcast out? It's like, I had no clue. we got to teach ourselves a lot of this. So I know a lot of you guys can relate, especially if you're an artist. And um, this is a this is documenting the journey because we have great pioneers of podcasts out there that can tell us about these experiences a great example is joe rogan who's probably one of if not the pioneer of podcasting and he happens to be a stand-up comedian um he has a great show a lot of our friends that we know have successful podcasts they have great shows and i think they're great but i want something different i don't I don't. We, the The world doesn't need another comedian, successful comedians podcast to to hear about you know, um, whatever. But I want it to be something different. And what this is, this is a podcast about an artist on the way up. Wouldn't you have liked to heard if if, Ro, if Joe Rogan had a podcast before he was famous? Wouldn't you have liked to he, her hear uh, your favorite artist, um, you know, George Carlin or? Or somebody, even Seinfeld, who, when, you know, if they had like a little voice recorder, they would talk to themselves and say like, hey, well, today, here's how this went. Someone t- kept memos of their experiences and, and obstacles and journeys that they went through. Wouldn't you like to hear those? I would. So that's what this is. This is a document of the journey of the artist. Okay, so everything I go through, I share with you guys in the moment. You know, good, bad. And right now, to get back on subject of talking about comedy comeback. Right now, we're dealing with something that most haven't. So we're documenting the journey of an artist, which has probably been pretty similar with past artists. A lot of them probably had to go through the same obstacles. Um, You know, your comedians who have passed on or retired, say uh, George Carlin, Bill Cosby, you know, he's still alive, but... You know, he's in jail, so he ain't doing nothing. Um, I mean, the list goes on and on of, of the greats, Lenny Bruce. Uh, I mean, I mean, comedic actors, um, you know, I mean, you got uh, Rodney Dangerfield. Like, all these guys are, are, are so great, and they're our favorites. But these legends have not even gone through what we're going through right now. This is an extremely new experience with the world shutting down, um, you know, you got you got the vid, you got you got COVID nineteen, aka the vid, who 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 came in, whatever you believe it was, if it's real, if it's fake, it's a, a side op, it's a, a you know made in a lab. We talk about that a lot here on this podcast, as I love conspiracy theories and, fi- and finding the truth. I love things like that, but whatever you believe it is, it doesn't matter. What matters is what you're gonna. What are you gonna do with it? And that's why I'm talking about comedy comeback right now, or whatever it is that is meaningful to you, or that you enjoy doing, that you have had to stop doing because of this. And then now we got rioters and and protesters in the streets. Um, you know, as soon as like it seemed like the world was kind of slowly going back to normal finally, and I started to you know get tour dates and stuff. Then you know the um, George Floyd thing happened. And it, it, now it, don't, it seemed like some comedy clubs were going well. Well, we, we were about to open, but now, you know, we're kind of scared that we're going to get looted or, you know, people are going to damage our property. You know, it's not safe for, for us to be inside. So it, it's very it's very all over. And but either way, whatever you believe all this to be, um, I'm, I'm not asking your political views on anything. I am saying that what are you going to do with it? Because some people are just taking it laying down. Some people are just going like, this sucks. How many memes or funny things do you see online all day going about 2020? Yeah, I get it. They're funny. But at one point, you have to go like, is it necessarily that 2020 is so bad? Or is it just that 
um, this was all kind of meant to be. Like, this is like a couple years in the making of things that could have been avoidable. And But either way, it happened. And what are we going to do about it? You have to fight on. You have to progress. You have to come back. So comedy is making a comeback right now. And I'm super excited to be back on stage. Half of me, actually a little bit more than half of me is excited. And then a little bit less than half, the other part, is going um, a little scared. I'm a little scared. And that's, that fear is going to be a good thing. We've talked a lot in here that artists know that when, once you're outside of your comfort zone, that is when you're more creative. That is when you're challenging yourself. So uh, I think that's super important, especially for an artist, for a human being. For a human being in general, you don't even have to be an artist. You you have to challenge yourself. You have to get out of your comfort zone. As soon as you find yourself being comfortable, it's time to move. It's time to move and do something different. Okay, um, I felt like that all the time in stand-up comedy. We before any of this, we talked about it on here many times. That um, you can't uh, you can't just stay in one place. You can't get comfortable. You have to keep challenging yourself. You have to keep moving. You know, if you're if you have a if, if, if we're talking about a diet that you're trying to keep, you know, you can get too comfortable in one thing and then all of a sudden people go like, well, how come I'm not losing weight anymore? I lost 10 pounds and now it just stopped. I don't lose. Sometimes you need to trick your body. Sometimes you need to switch things up and do things differently. You need to have lifestyle changes. Sometimes you get comfortable eating the same stuff and then you put weight on. Um, and, or sometimes you get comfortable not going to walk or exercise. And it's easy to get into this, but that it's so bad for you. Now, as a stand-up comedian, I would sometimes go through stages of not uh, uh, getting to perform very often. Like every now and then, you know, bookings might be slow. Um, you know, you don't get booked that often. You know, work slows down. And then, you know, uh, before you know it, I would find myself going like a couple of weeks without getting on stage. And that first time that I would always end up back on stage after a long break was always terrifying because like the nerves come back if you go on stage every single day you know the nerves are there but not really you know what i mean like you're kind of numb to it i did this that's why i like like in, like in arizona i'm gonna have a thursday night show two friday night two saturday night and then one sunday night it's all back-to-back shows and then you just by the end of it the fear goes away and the, the nerves go away but if you take a little break I remember when I would go back after a long break, the nerves would just come back and it was scary. And I would always tell myself like, stop taking those long breaks. Even if you have to go to an open mic, just get up there because, because I would hate that feeling of fear, but the feeling of fear sometimes can be good to get you out of your rut, to wake you up. And I actually enjoyed it when I went up at first, I was afraid I was petrified. Just kidding. But I, at first I was afraid and then I would go on stage and start performing it and then I would just, I would love that feeling again. I have that feeling again like everything is new, you know? It's like you ever, you have like a song that you love that the song just gets you in the heart. Don't you wish sometimes that you can go back and hear it for the first time or like a movie or, or, or a TV series that you absolutely love and you binge watch it all the time and you can watch it over and over and over again. And don't you wish that you can go and watch it for the first time so you don't know what's coming? And that's kind of what it's like when you would have like these long breaks, which a long break to me was like two weeks without going on stage. That's forever. And, um, you know, you felt anxiety and scared and your nerves come back. And then you start to question yourself, am I going to remember everything? And, and uh, is it going to flow right? Is my timing still going to be on? And... You know, if I want to try something new, is it going to be too risky because I'm not in my groove right now? So I can't go all over the place and then come back to my usual because my usual is, is uh, you know, I'm, it's not my usual right now. I'm rusty. You get so rusty from the, even a short break like that. But I would always be up there going like, man, this feels good, though. Once I was up there, this feels good to be alive again, to not knowing. Yeah, it's great. If you have a bit that you know works everybody loves that bit now again i'm a stand-up comedian this is the only way i know how to tell you okay but if you have a a a joke 
that that thing is brilliant, it's your gold, it's your best joke, and you know that when you tell it to audiences, it gets them. You know it's going to get them. Now, those are great. That's awesome. But sometimes that little mystery of is this re- is this going to work or not, you need that too. So you got to keep writing new. You got to keep having new things because it keeps things fresh. You got to always be advancing and developing your act and develop and advancing your writing, which you're not going to do if you're just doing the same stuff over and over again. That's great that you have that material that works. That's that's wonderful. But that feeling of I wonder if this is going to work or not. That's a great feeling too. It keeps you on your toes. It keeps you sharp. In in the moment, it'll keep you on top of things and fresh. And in the moment, it's going to make you quick because you're going to be scared to be stuck in a situation that didn't work. So you're fighting so hard. So 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 many things are coming out of you. You're, you're creating and you're probably going to have something shoot out of you that you have never said before and it just worked. And you're probably going to add it in your act. I love trying new bits. I absolutely love doing stand-up comedy, not only because you know it's amazing when you make people laugh, but also I love the feeling of trial and error. I love telling you a bit that I don't know if it's going to work or not, and I'm going to wait and see. And then um, I get to like play with the words and, and see how I can make it work and how come it worked that time, but it didn't work that time. What did I do different? I loved all that shit. It, it's one of the, my favorite things about stand-up comedy that brought me into it. There's so many different forms of art. If you're a musician and you guys, or maybe you or your band have this like song that everybody comes out to your shows and they want to hear that song. That feels great. You have people that know your music. You have people that come out to see you and to see them sing along to your song that you wrote uh, and you perform. It's an amazing feeling. But how about that feeling when you drop that new song on them and you're sitting there going, man, I hope this one sticks too. You, an artist needs that. And this is why I am excited, which my excitement overpowers my fear, which I am afraid to, but my excitement overpowers my fear of the comedy comeback, the world comeback, the United States comeback. I'm excited to go perform for all of you again. If, you're, if you vote blue, if you vote red, if you don't vote, I don't give a shit. I'm here to perform for you. That's my job. I am excited to come back and perform uh, as an artist. That's what I do. That's what I do best. And sometimes I need to remind myself to not get too involved with politics, although politics are extremely interesting more than ever, especially when uh, and we're so divided more than ever. And I have my opinions on it, but I, I have to keep reminding myself that my job is not to choose a side, although I have. Sort of, not really. I haven't even really chosen a side. I, 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 I'm an independent thinker. Um, but I can see what I think is right and wrong. But my job isn't to try to divide us even more. My job is to bring us together. And I'm so excited for the comedy comeback. That's what I'm here for. It's going to be fantastic. I'm excited for it. And an artist needs that. An artist needs that feeling of, I wonder how it's going to go. It's the only thing that's going to make you a better artist. You have to. If you know how it's going to go, how are you going to improve? So I'm super excited about it. And as I was saying, the legends that we look up to, they didn't really have to go through this. Maybe to a certain extent, they had to go through other things. You know, um, you know, I'm sure if you go back far enough, you'll have entertainers that had to go through, uh, you know, black entertainers not allowed in the same changing room as the uh, white entertainers. I'm sure all that happened. Um, I'm sure there was different levels of things. But what I'm talking about is this three month lockdown and the world is starting back up again. And for a while there, I was afraid what was going to happen to the live performance. What was going to happen to the live performing artist? I was worried about it. How could people come back? How can we come back and talk about and interact regular everyday lives and not even address this pandemic in the world? How can we talk about anything else? Because it seems like everywhere you go, no one's talking about anything else other than these two topics that are currently in the major me- in mainstream media. How can we talk about anything else? But you know what? They need you to talk about other things. You are their escape from it. 
That's your job as an artist. Um, so we're having a comeback and we're going through something that we never had to go through before. We had a three months break and I was extremely worried about, uh, what was going to happen to live comedy or live performing arts. Uh, not only, uh, what I just mentioned, but now you got people who are somewhat afraid to be around each other. Laughter is contagious. You hear that all the time. And, um, you know, if you've ever been to a comedy club, a good comedy club, They'll tell you where to sit when you come in. You have to sit here. And you might go, no, I don't want to sit that close. I want to sit a little back over here. And they'll tell you, no, we have to fill up this section before we can start sitting this section. A good comedy club seats their audience this way because they know that that's the way you see everybody together and close together, close to the stage. And if you have a sold out show, it should be filled front to back so that you don't have any gaps in the middle of emptiness. And you don't want to have like to the left a, a table of people and to the right a table of people and then uh and then in the middle nobody because as a performer you have to look this way and then you have to go back and look this way you want like everyone sitting center front and then spreading out that's the way you sit so now we're thinking about like man like people are going to be afraid to come out people are going to be scared to sit next to each other and spread that laughter and spread that joy and love and um fun again uh, but you know what, you guys? I'm not really worried about any of that anymore. I'm excited. The comedy club I'm about to go do in Arizona is only... Listen, it holds like 300, but they're only selling 75 tickets per show, so it's limited seating. But you know what? Whatever it takes to make people feel comfortable, and let's slowly get back. So what I'm excited about is we're given something that many haven't. The legends that you look up to did not get this opportunity. So you can take this COVID-19 and you can go, it was horrible, it put me down, I'm behind on bills now, I'm behind on rent, uh, you know, which is bullshit because I know if you're in the United States, you got you got more money on unemployment than you did when you were working for most people, not all. But, but you know, I know that it, that ruined a lot of people. You know, your government wants you to rely on them. They're counting on a lot of people getting used to sitting on the couch collecting those unemployment checks and nobody wants to go back to work. You know, a friend of mine owns a business he's hiring right now and they put an ad out and nobody ha- and, and nobody's uh, sent in their applications. A couple of people sent in their resumes. He made two appointments to have interviews with two of them. Neither of them showed up. It's hard to get off that couch when you got free money coming in. This is not the mentality that you should have. This is not the mentality that an artist should have. You might have this mentality, but I promise you, you will not succeed with this mentality. You have to get up and get out and get going. So back to the second chance that we are given, this opportunity that we are given. We, uh, artists right now are given a second chance. Performers are given a second chance. Americans are being given a second chance. Human beings are being given a second chance because the world is coming back. And now it, it, it's like it reset. So now you can decide how are you going to do it differently. As a stand-up comedian, as a man, as an artist, I'm going to be doing this differently. I'm going to be taking advantage of the rare opportunity that I was, that I was given. It's a second chance. To do things right, go harder, go stronger, work tirelessly, be more motivated. You ha- you're you're given a second chance right now. It wasn't necessarily fear. It wasn't necessarily what's going to happen to the performing artist. I was I was worried about it at first, but now I'm not. Now I'm going. What are you going to do with it? It's not what happens to you. It's how do you react to what's happening to you? I think the famous line from uh, Rocky, the movie Rocky Balboa, which is essentially a a part six to Rocky, is, um, you know, which wasn't one of the best Rocky movies, but I think there's one of the most memorable lines in there that people love because it's so true is. It's not about how hard you can hit. It's about how hard you can get hit, but keep getting up and moving forward. So 
this is your time, you guys. This is it. This is my time. It's my second chance. I'm going for it. I'm excited. I'm going for it. If you're brave enough to want to come out, come out. If you feel safe, come out. You want to wear a mask, wear your mask. You want to wear your placebo mask and come to the comedy show, wear your placebo mask. I, if you feel comfortable with me wearing a mask and you want to come say hello to me up to the show, I'll put a mask on for you. I'll wear my placebo mask. But I, when I get on stage, I'm taking my mask off and I'm going to perform for you guys. And I'm not going to talk about politics in my act. And I am going to not be a part of the dividing of our nation. I'm going to be a part of bringing it together as, uh, as my job as an artist is to do, to perform for all of you. So um, people deserve second chances, which is the, the most important thing that I wanted to talk about here. Second thing that I wanted to talk about before I go, it's a con- uh, controversial subject. Everybody has opinions and views on it. I hardly want to talk about it, but I, I have my point of view on it. We, um, we're dealing with a race war right now. Which, this episode is not to be political, but, you know, I think it's a, it's, a, it's a planned race war. I think it's not even our war. I think it's a war of politicians, or it's a war of people who run the world. That's personally what I think, and they have actually uh, created us to battle each other instead. But I want to talk about this Black Lives Matters movement. My first sentence might make you want to turn my podcast off, but uh, give me a little better uh, benefit of the doubt besides this first sentence. And the first sentence is that I have one problem with Black Lives Matters, which I'll get back to in a second. Now, it's not that all lives matters. If you think that's what I was going to say, that's not what I was going to say. Let me tell you guys something. About people that say all lives matters. I th- I'm not going to lie to you. I think I was one at one point. Not now. But like a couple of years ago. I want to say 2015. 2016. When the phrase black lives matters. First started kind of going around. I didn't know anything about it. I didn't know it was an organization. I just thought it was something that people were saying. I think my first instinct was. Well all lives matters. I think I'm going to be 100% honest with you. That was my first instinct. Because I didn't really think about it. And I think that, you know, you got two types of people that are saying this. People, people that say all lives matter, they are either really are racist. Because I'm not going to say that there's not racist people out there. Because there fucking are. Okay, you know. Um, and uh, But then I think there's these people that who are not racist at all. Who their first instinct was, well, all lives matter. Because it was almost like, well, duh, to us. You know what I mean? It was almost like, well... That's a given. Like, why are we even having this conversation? So I think at first I did have that instinct. But as time went on, and especially now, um, I, I've thought about it more. I know more about it. And I understand it more. And uh, it's not that it took a while. It's just that I didn't you know, even think about it. It was just my first instinct. So now, my thoughts on all lives matters is, well, that's not true. It's not. Listen, if they were saying only black lives matter, then maybe you can reply with, well, no, all lives matter. But that's not what they're saying. They're not saying only black lives matter. They're just saying black lives matter. State, like, like a statement, stating a fact, reminding people that need to be reminded. I didn't think I needed to be reminded because I already knew that they did. But I guess some people need to be reminded. Peacefully, and then, and, uh, and, or in other ways, harshfully, because some people need it to be told a little harsher. They didn't say only Black Lives Matter. They just said Black Lives Matters, and and they do. And the correct response to that is not all lives matter, because that's even bullshit. And you guys know me on here. If anything, not that I brand myself any p- political party. If anything, I think that you guys, if you guys know me, you know that I'm more. Um, uh, conservative than not. I'm more, I think I relate more to being conservative than uh, liberal 
but then some things I I relate to being liberal too. But I but you guys know me. I'm not. You know, I, I I'm more of a. I guess on the right side at this point in life, I guess you would say. But even I know that there's dumbasses out there who really are racist. And then there are people who say, uh, you know, all lives matter. Like I've seen a bunch of videos of people with Confederate flags and, and uh, you know, they are holding Trump flags. It's like, by the way, I think that those are staged. I think that, that that's placed there on purpose to make Trump look bad. And if it's not, then people doing that if you like trump you should really stop doing that because you just make him look bad he didn't he didn't give you those flags to fucking do that with him you know what i mean i i feel like that's staged anyway but you know if you look at these these people who really believe you know no all lives matters and that don't really get it uh they're kind of if you want to stereotype uh redneckish okay and uh uh, listen, guys, I'm real over here. I don't fucking uh, politically correct nothing, okay? They're real redneckish. So these people who are saying all lives matters are the same people who are saying uh, who are saying let's go hunting. Well, <laughs> you know what I mean. I'm not trying to this, make this podcast about shaming people who eat meat or who, or who kill animals. I personally don't do it. I personally, I, I, I'm not perfect. I ate meat for 30 years. I'm about to be 32 years old. I ate meat for more than th- almost, about 31 years, approximately. And I'm not perfect, but I'm not here to preach and say you should stop eating meat. That's not what this is about. But animals are lives too. Cows are lives. Uh, as much as a dog is a life. If you got a dog, a, a cow has a similar traits, same personality. Like can hear you talk, can think, can breathe, can can you know, make sounds when it's hungry. Like, like it's the same thing. A cow is a life, is it not? A deer is a life, is it not? So people who say all lives matters and then you go hunting, it's an oxymoron. If you ever killed a spider in your house, I know, guys, I'm getting petty. That's a life. All lives don't matter. Um, I personally, this is my personal opinion. I don't know about some of you guys. If you're a rapist or a child molester and you uh, go to jail and get raped or someone kills you in prison or something like that, I got news for you. I don't feel sorry for you. And I personally think your life doesn't matter. Now, it might matter to somebody else. Maybe they got a mother or a sister or something like that. But at the end of the day, I don't know them. And all I see is the evil they did. Their life doesn't matter to me. So no, lives don't matter. Not all lives matter. I think that people deserve a second chance. I think if you were a robber, you know, theft, drug dealer, um, you know, made bad choices in your life. Um, I would even say maybe under very 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 extreme circumstances very rare and unique circumstances maybe someone who even murdered someone maybe in some ways deserves a second chance but i would say somebody who is a child molester doesn't deserve a second chance because honestly while we're talking on second chances i, I think that almost everybody deserves a second chance but I, I don't know how i feel about child molesters because you you know exactly how awful it is to do that, and you did it the first time. So it takes, I, I think, a very sick individual to do something like that, and I think that kind of sick ain't got no cure. So uh, I think that once you do that, you always do that. That's my personal opinion. But bottom line is, not all lives matter. So stop saying that. You sound like a fucking idiot. But yes, black lives matter. My life matters. My mom's life matters. Your mom's life matters. My sister's, your husband. Like, yes, I got friends of many colors. Their lives matter to me. They're not saying only black lives matters. They're saying black lives matters. Now to get to my one thing that bothers me about black lives matters is that people have no idea about the organization they only know about the phrase the meaning behind the phrase I agree with as I just said and explained but the organization that started it you guys don't know anything about it some of you didn't even know it was an organization 
Now, people who are out there protesting peacefully, they're good people. You know, you might be a little sick of the, you know, shit going on in the world. And, you know, it gets a little crazy. They're talking about taking away, you know, unmantling police and taking away police funds and all this shit. You're getting a little crazy now. Now you're just turning people against each other because we're talking about a right and wrong. We're talking about stupidity and not stupidity. And then we're talking about sheep and not sheep. Okay? But there's nice people out there protesting, man. They really love everybody. They really want everybody to be treated equally, and so do I. You know, it was never even really a question for me. I got I got stand-up comedian friends that I would consider my brothers of of, of all color. Of uh, you know, I I have black friends that like you know, we're they understand we're all stand-up comics. They'll go up and they'll make fun of white people in, in a bit that they do. I'll go up and make fun of black people in a bit that I do, and make fun of white people. Uh, and they understand that that's the comedy world. And then we come off stage and and, and we, we we talk like, you know, nothing. When you're comedians, you're in a whole nother level. You're, you know, we both had to do the shitty gigs. We both had to perform in basements and get paid in, uh, in, in like, Cracker Jacks. We get paid in food. We got paid in, like, you know, uh, 99 cent store bologna sandwiches. Like, we like at that moment, we're we're both in the same boat. It's hard to be racist against somebody when you're in the same boat as them. You know, you can take your guy from like, you know, some of you might got might have a dad who might sometimes say racial slurs or something like that, but you know he's got a good heart and he loves everybody. But some of you guys, you know, it just depends like where he came from, like, you know, he came from like you know, East Coast in the 1960s, he grew up and stuff like that. You know, they might have racial slurs, but even that guy he isn't going to he's eventually going to lose it little by little the more he works in the same boat with them. You can't be racist against somebody that you're in the same boat with. You can't like you know, you have two working class men, black and white, who make the same hourly wage and are sitting in there, you know, in a telemarketing room or sitting there being a contractor, you know, working in the heat, sweating next to each other side by side. You can't sit there and say that one's better than the other. You know, so I think that um, I know from experience that people, I know people who have, who are older, who sometimes use racial slurs eventually, you know, were just like, I fucking love everybody. You can't, we're in the same boat. And I feel that way with stand-up comedians because a lot of us had it, you, you know, we experienced the same things. We, both, we all had to eat dirt together. And I don't think at one point any of us really felt privileged. And we we had to do stuff that we didn't want to do. I know me and another black comedian that both had to clean the, the, the urine off the bathroom floor. It's just a, a comedy club will allow us to do five minutes on stage. Like, at that point, like, we're brothers. We're both the same. You know, I never really thought about it any other way. I have nothing to prove. But these people out here protesting, man, they're good people. You know what I mean? They might have the wrong idea. And then they might have the right idea. You know, it depends on, on their agenda. Sometimes they get too radical. And then sometimes they're just out there going like, hey, man, we want you to treat them equally. We don't want you to be, like, fucking killing them. And, and, and uh, you know, we want police to not be treating them differently because of their skin color. Like, a lot of them want this. You know, they're good people. A lot of them are, in the protests are young, young, young people. Like, I drive by them, and or I walk by them, and I see young kids out. Man, they 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 want good. They really want good. And you know, a lot of them want to just get a good Instagram picture too. You know, just to say like I was out there protesting. You know, for the attention because that's all. That's what the youth and 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 social media is all about. I would like I would like to know one person that went down and protested and didn't and didn't let anybody know, or didn't put it on their social media. Um, but it's, 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 that's besides the point. It's just that, they, they, you know, they're good, but nobody, and it's, to, it's back to my problem with Black Lives Matter. Nobody knows what the organization really is, though. You don't know who started it. You can go Google who started it, and it's going to tell you, you know, a couple names, which is bullshit. You don't know who funded it. You don't know who put the money that backed those people. You don't know who continues to drop money into it. You have no idea. You guys are out there yelling Black Lives Matter, which, like, again, I agree with the statement. I agree with what it represents. But you guys know that that phrase became because an organization decided to start a group. That's my problem with it. You guys don't even, a lot of people don't even know that. You know, a bunch of rich white men started the organization so that they could 
have some money to donate it to because it's a tax write-off. And then they run the organization to turn us against each other. I'm okay with what Black Lives Matter means, but they, they very cleverly named it that so that you can't think it's a bad organization. I know people that absolutely hate Donald Trump, but have admitted to me that that Make America Great Again shit was brilliant. They'll go, that, that's just marketing. That's just genius marketing. That shit stuck and that shit works. It's just a, a, an ingenious campaign to run. So, of course, they named their organization, which honestly was meant to do bad. They named it Black Lives Matter to confuse you and, you. and you think they're there to do good, but they're really not. They're, really, they're, they're here to create a race war, which, as you can see, the majority loves black people and wants their rights. But they're just trying to create a race war. I would like someone to show me, and everybody tells me, oh, show me the link, show me the statistics of where you're getting this information when I tell them that George Soros and Hillary Clinton fund millions and millions of dollars into the Antifa and the Black Lives Matter organization, which are not there to do good things. Um, but I can tell you it's a fact. And people told me, well, there's no tax returns for organizations they don't have to file taxes whoever thinks that you're a fucking idiot if there's mo- millions of dollars being donated into something there's paper trail of it and and it's and it's tax write-offs so you can go look at who's donating into these things it's hillary clinton and it's george soros who george soros is not an american he's someone who has uh, um under quoting he, he's been quoted to say he hates america and wants to see it come down he's also been known to say i'm going to use black people to take america down because because they will be easy to manipulate and to start a race war he said this this is the same person who has funded and started black lives matters and and, and the antifa okay look into it don't believe what you heard that there's no paper trail there's paper trail when someone drops that kind of money into something okay now I just think it's important that people know this. Now, it's just brilliant. They called it Black Lives Matters. You can't argue with it. It's like, yeah, of course Black Lives Matters. Like, why would you even get mad at that organization? That's brilliant, you know? It's like if you called Ep- Epstein Island fucking, uh, you know, Disneyland. So kids going to go over there. Like, that's what they're doing. It's like, of course, they're not going to call their evil organization the... Uh, Let's make let's let let's start a race war organization. They're not going to call it that. They're tricking you, you guys. It's called Black Lives Matters. That's what that's where the phrase came from. It's brilliant. It's brilliant marketing. It's brilliant. But it was created to turn us against each other. I would like someone to show me something where Black Lives Matters because they've been around since I want to say 2015 or earlier. I think earlier, maybe 2013 or something like that. But they've been around for a while, before, long before this protest. So I would like someone to show me what they've done in that time. What has that organization done in that time? Because I can show you documents of millions of dollars in donations that they got. What have they done with it? What have they done for black people? Has the Black Lives Matter organization ever helped uh, them get into housing? Help them get jobs? Help them bring jobs into their neighborhoods? Help clean up their neighborhoods? As the Antifa tweets, you know, head to Whitey's neighborhood, which is bullshit too. That in itself is is a racial statement. Head to white man's neighborhood? I don't know where the fuck you, you what, what America you think you still live in, but uh, I live in a, in, a, in a nice neighborhood. And I got a ton of black neighbors. Are you trying to say black people can't afford these neighborhoods? Antifa, that's the most racist ass shit ever. Black people can afford these neighborhoods. I got a neighbor down here who's got a nicer house than I do. They got a they got a two million dollar house down the road. I'm over here in a one bedroom apartment. You're gonna come after white neighborhoods? Black people live here. But so show me where the Black Lives Matters organization or Antifa organization has helped black people get jobs, has helped them get money has has uh has helped them uh get into housing or or at least a nice place to live has helped you know them go to college an education fund for them who who can't afford college have they done any of that 
or or given some of that money to to represent them when they get arrested unlawfully because of a racist cop how about like in taking some of that money to fight for their to pay for their lawyers to get them good lawyers to get rid of some of this bogus bullshit charges that they've been on has these organizations ever done any of that all they've ever done is create chaos start riots and wars that's what they exist for so that's my problem with black lives matters the organization the meaning behind the phrase, I'm fine with. And I agree with. Anyway, two very, very, very different topics here, you guys. But most importantly, I just want to remind everybody that um, you are given second chances. Globalization is being reset right now. The world is being reset right now. Those of us who didn't need to be reminded that Black Lives Matters are here for support and agreeance. And those who needed to hear it, I think some won't, but I think a lot of them will. I think that, that a lot of people are changing. Um, I just hope that the good things change, not these ridiculous things that they're trying to say. But uh, that's it, you guys. Like I said, I don't want to get too political because I can talk about it forever. And I didn't want to do such a long podcast, but uh, you know me, you guys. I just get to talking. But anyway, uh, that's it, you guys. I want to remind you. That we are all human beings and should be treated as such equally. And I don't care if you voted for Hillary, if you voted for Trump. Although if you voted for Hillary, I think that you're a damn fool. Um, <laughs> at this at this point, I mean, I I, it, I just don't agree with a lot of stuff. But it doesn't matter. I don't care who you voted for. I don't care what your views are. I care to a certain extent. But at the end of the day, I'm a stand-up comedian. And my job is to bring us together. Remember that they're constantly trying to tear us apart. And that's on purpose. We are all together on this. Okay? I'm going to bring us together by bringing people together to laugh. And performing for them. Performing bits that I wrote. That everybody universally laughs at. Which is a reminder of how much we all are alike. Because so many people come out to my shows. Republicans, Democrats, black people, white people, Asian people, Latino people. Uh, you name it. They come out to my shows. Okay, Gay people. Uh, blind people. Deaf people. I've had, you name it, I've had, I, I've had, I've had to perform with a six-year-old in the audience or a baby in the audience, and I've had to perform with a ninety-year-old in the audience, uh, with, with, you know, being wheeled in with, in a wheelchair with their, with their oxygen tank. I've had to perform for every single type of person that you can possibly think of, and I have had solid performances in front of all of them because everybody gets the material that I'm talking about because I'm talking about things that we can all relate to, and if we're all laughing together, it must obviously mean that we have a lot in common and we're not so different. So let's laugh at these things together. I'm headed to Big Bear for the weekend. I'm going to turn all social media off. I'm going to turn everything off, including my phone. It's the first time ever in my life uh, since I've had a cell phone that I'm just going to turn it off for the entire weekend. And I'm going to rest, and I'm going to write, and I'm going to relax, and I'm going to walk, and I'm going to hike up in Big Bear and hide out in the woods and have a great time. Um, I hope that you guys can find peace and happiness and laughter and whatever you do. Have a great weekend. Don't forget to click the link in the description for Personal Chef to go and to go to homeschoolpod.com to click on tour to get tickets to see me in Phoenix, a.k.a. slash Scottsdale, Arizona at House of Comedy, June 18th through 21st. And while you're on the website, homeschoolpod.com, click on merch and get yourself a t-shirt and support while you still can get the ex-president's t-shirt. Thank you, guys. I want to give a big thank you to my co-host, Kevin Lyons, who edits all these. And I want to give a big thank you to all of you guys who support this podcast and and, and are giving us a, a try for the first time and dealing with my crazy rants, which I know a lot of it's off the wall, but I, got, I come from a good place, you guys. I want to give a shout-out. I got some shout-outs to give in this episode every now and then. I give shout-outs to people that support and show love. I want to give a shout-out to uh, Boca Bradley. Reg Murphy 2, Universal 369963. That's a long-ass uh, 
username. I want to give a shout out to Bert Sempire. I want to give a shout out to Speaking Wrestle. I want to give a shout out to uh, Alan Gawaski. Sorry if I butchered that. But anyway, I love you guys. Have a great weekend. Be safe. Be smart. Show love. Spread love, not fear. Spread love, not hate. Laugh. I'll see you guys next time.